Welcome to the fourth installment in the Eight Essential Steps to Clawhammer Banjo video series. For many of you, this lesson is the moment you've been waiting for. Finally, we're going to start ringing the fifth string with our thumbs. And in many ways, we've been building up to this moment uh, with the previous lessons, uh, which have set the stage for us to learn this all-important uh, technique of claw hammer banjo playing. So if you recall back in lesson two, I mentioned that for the most part, the short fifth string functions as a drone note in claw hammer banjo playing, uh, which means that it's a note that's continuously sounded in the background in our music. Now, what this means for our picking hand is that we have two simultaneous tasks. On the one hand, we have to be picking out the melody note with our uh, picking finger on the first through the fourth strings, but at the same time, we've got to be picking, uh, we've got to be keeping the fifth string ringing with our thumbs. So it's critical that we develop a stroke that's effic as efficient a as possible, and that's exactly what we're going to work on today. Um, once you've gotten the basic idea of the stroke down, we're then going to move, as usual, to a few exercises with the metronome to help get it burned into your neurons. And uh, you'll be happy to know that after this lesson, uh, for the most part, future uh, exercises will either be uh, parts of tunes or entire tunes. So something to look forward to. So just to recap what we've covered so far, uh, in the first lesson, I covered the two basic motions of the picking hand which are the hammer and the strum. In the second lesson, uh, I covered the all-important thumb rest. And in the last lesson, we covered the skill of striking the individual strings with our picking finger. And today's lesson, we're going to uh, cover the last part of the claw hammer stroke, which is uh, plucking the fifth string with our thumbs. So first off, before we start picking the fifth string with our thumb in the context of the claw hammer stroke, I just want you to get the basic idea of how, the pluck, how plucking the fifth string should feel. So go ahead and just press the flesh of your thumb up against the fifth string, and then push forward on it. And pluck like that. Remember you're going to be uh, pushing up against it with the flesh of your finger. Your nail is not involved at all in sounding the string. Do that for a little bit once you kind of got the idea of plucking the fifth string with your thumb. We're going to move on to using it in the claw hammer stroke. Okay, so now we're going to do that same exact thing except we're going to do it at the end of the hammer motion. All right, so what I want you to do is strike down on the first string using the hammer, have your thumb come to rest against the fifth, like we've worked on, and then pluck upwards with your thumb, just like you just did, like this. So hammer, thumb rest, pluck. Hammer thumb rest, pluck. It should, when you come to the um, end of the hammer stroke and you have your thumb on the fifth string and you're going to pluck it, it should almost feel like a squeezing movement, like you're squeezing the um, fifth string towards, towards the palm of your hand. And one of the cool things that happens here is that after you pluck the fifth, your hand is going to naturally recoil a little bit and come back towards the place where you started. Um, so what that means is you're not wasting any movement. Regardless of whether you decide to sound the fifth string or not uh, after the thumb rest, you're basically doing the exact same thing with your hand. So there's really no wasted motion here. So you're basically uh, getting the ringing of the fifth string with your thumb as an added bonus uh, with the stroke. So Practice that a little bit with the hammer motion on the first string. And then next try it with the strum. So once again, strum across the strings with, and then have the thumb come to rest against the fifth and then pluck the fifth afterwards just like you were doing earlier.
Okay, so practice both of those strokes a little bit, and um, once you've got a, uh, the basic idea of it, um, you're ready to start with the metronome exercises. Okay, so uh, now we're going to uh, work on a few exercises with the metronome. Um, as always, I'd recommend that you start on a very slow metronome setting and then work upwards as you feel comfortable with it. Um, this time, with these exercises, uh, we're going to be playing one stroke per click of the metronome. In the previous videos, we've been doing one stroke per two clicks. Um, which means that an 80 beats per minute setting is going to feel a good bit faster to you than it did in the other videos. So uh, I've added some slower settings on the metronome playlist, which you can access here. And I'd recommend that you start on these exercises at around maybe the 50 beats per minute uh, mark and then increase by 10 beats per minute until you can play along with maybe the 80 beats per minute setting. Um, which is about what I'm going to be doing on the examples here. So in this first exercise here, we're going to play a hammer stroke, and then we're going to follow that with a hammer thumb stroke. So in tab it looks like this, and it should sound like this. Now I'd recommend that you uh, do that same pattern on uh, not just the first string but also the second string, the third string, and the fourth string. Um, those are tabbed out in the uh, written materials that you can uh, get by signing up below. Um, I'm not going to demonstrate those specifically, um, but uh, I'd still recommend that you uh, work on each one of the strings separately. So for the second exercise, we're going to again play a hammer on the first string and then follow that with a strum and a thumb stroke, like this. In tab it looks like this, and it should sound like this. Once again, I'd recommend that you do that same exercise on each of the strings, so a hammer on the second string and a strum thumb, hammer on the third string, strum thumb, and so forth. And again, those um, are listed in tab in the written materials. So in the third exercise, we're going to use the same uh, pattern that we did in exercise one, but we're going to move it uh, sequentially up the strings. So we're going to start on the first string, play that hammer, hammer thumb pattern four times, move to the second string, then the third string, then the fourth string. So it looks like this in tab and should sound like this. In the fourth exercise, we're going to be using the same pattern we did in the second exercise, the hammer followed by a strum thumb. And again, take that pattern and move it from the first string to the second string, third string, fourth string, just like what we did in the last exercise. So in tab, it looks like this, and it should sound like this.
And for the last exercise, what we're going to do is uh, follow every hammer stroke with a thumb. And we're going to start by doing that on the first string. So in tab, it'll look like this. And it should sound like this. And once again, just like in the first two exercises, I'd recommend you do that same pattern on the second string, the third string, and the fourth string, the hammer thumb, hammer thumb, hammer thumb. And again, those um, are tabbed out in the written materials. Okay, well congratulations. Uh, if you're able to make it through those exercises, then uh, you have mastered the fundamentals of the claw hammer stroke and uh, now possess uh, a tool that you can use to make incredible sounding music. Um, and as I said earlier, um, from here on out, uh, most of our exercises are going to be either parts of tunes or entire tunes. So we're going to start make, making some really good music uh, in a hurry. So practice up, and I'll see you in Lesson 5.